My name is Nati Hadebe, my wife Adrian and our two daughters Kia and Talia pastor in a beautiful nation of Madagascar. We just want to give praise for all what God is doing here. In August last year, churches were allowed to reopen after a year of being closed due to pandemic. Even during those times, we continued to meet and we saw God do miraculous things. One glorious testimony, one lady that prayed with us during confinement who has brought 17 others into the church. These souls continue to come and were baptized. In September, we were able to partner with the El Dorado Park to send another work into Antanana River, the capital of Madagascar. We also took a step of faith to send another work locally in our region. These works have opened and are seeing much fruit. This year, God has been doing a work in the area of couples and finances. So far, we have had four couples get married, three of which came in living together or pregnant or got converted and married. One couple had an appointment to get an abortion. They came into the church uh, when we reopened, got saved and married and now have a beautiful little girl. This much, most of the country went back to, into total confinement. Despite this challenge, the churches here kept pressing on. They still continue to meet, evangelize, and see souls saved. Total confinement here means leaving home except for specific reasons. The government gave us a loophole when they said we can go and support local restaurant. We started meeting in different restaurants across the city during that time. We saw two healed, 25 saved, all the while just eating at a restaurant. And one instant I called out for someone with a back pain. People and workers in the restaurant were completely shocked to see a miracle before their eyes. Six staff members from that restaurant gave their life to Jesus Christ that day. When the outdoor gatherings were, became permitted, we began to meet outdoors in different locations. God uh, really stirred our people, and when we opened two weeks ago, we had an influx of visitors and souls saved. We'd just like to thank Pastor Greg and Sister Lisa Mitchell, all the Prescott staff, and the Prescott Congregation for your investment and your prayers. We also want to thank Pastor Ron and Katie Bennett for the years they sacrificed to serve in South Africa. Pastor Bennett was not only my father-in-law, but a great leader whose heart was for the people and missions. He had such an impact in South Africa and surrounding nations. Adrian said he literally left his heart in South Africa doing missionary work for God. His legacy will forever remain even here in Madagascar as we continue to press forward, plan churches and risk like he did. What an honor and a privilege to be a missionary just like he was. We are so thankful to represent everyone in this nation and we are grateful for the outpouring of love and support for our family during this time. God bless you all and have a great conference. And we're going to have some live reports. If you'd give us your name, your wife's name, and where you pastor in this order, Pastor Ovidio Russo, Naaman Struck, Archie Brown, Felipe Segovia, and Angel Ortiz. Hello, my name is Ovidio Russo, and together with my wife, Lumerisa, we're pastoring in Brash of Romania. I have a good report tonight. In spite of the COVID craziness, the finances of the church in all this time kept growing and people uh, got, uh, kept getting um, added to the church. So there are so many good things and wonderful things that God is doing. I obviously cannot tell you about everything, but I'm going to focus on some of the people that God brought into the church in this time. One man in the church brought his mother to church to be prayed for. For a long time, she didn't want to come to church, but now she's very sick. And the man says, please come, let the pastor pray for you. So she comes. She cannot close her hands. There is pain all over the body. She has trouble with the balance uh, while walking. So I led her in a prayer. She renounced bitterness uh, uh, for, uh, on uh, her ex-husband. And in a moment of time, she got healed and she got delivered. There was no pain. She could freely move her hands. Her walk improved greatly. 
The next service, here is the man in the church and his wife, his mother is next to him, his brother and his wife with their two children, his backslidden sister, a whole row of uh, chairs in the church uh, filled by one family. There is another lady, my wife got uh, co her contact from somebody uh, because she expressed the desire to visit the church. So my wife called her, you know, offered her, offered to pick her up. And she says, no, I, I, I will come, but not now because something is happening. This is So this went on for seven months. My wife, you know, kept texting her, kept inviting her. And then all of a sudden, one service, she just shows up with her little daughter. She got radically saved. She attends faithfully since then to every service. And uh, she said, it's very different in this church than in the Orthodox Church. I clearly understand what it is said, uh, and it made sense. There is another two young, beautiful families that are locked in in this time. They are faithfully attending every new convert class, hungry to learn. So God is doing wonderful things. We also uh, began a rehab center. Uh, in the Brasov Church with the help from Russia, from uh, Pastor Golubev. And it's very exciting to work with these uh, drug addicts, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, also scary at times, all kinds of manifestations. You, when you pray for these guys, you never know what is going to happen. But God was able to touch some of these men, and we have several men that they're really saved, really delivered. Did this happen? It didn't happen all of a sudden. It happened in time, after much ministry and showing them love and patience. But they are delivered and changed. Two of them actually have ministry in the church right now, and uh, are willing to stay and um, help the rehab, help other people them to become like them. Thank you very much. I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Greg and Lisa, for their leadership and for them being a blessing. God bless you all. My name is Naaman, my wife Dawn, and our two children, Ethan and Ashnan, were announced July 2016 to Mind for Souls in Kimberley, South Africa. When the enemy comes with the COVID flood, the Spirit of God himself will raise up a wave against him. I want to talk about God's wave. Wonderful work of God in Kimberly. We've been seeing new converts come into our church. March marked five years that the church was birthed. We had an outdoor service. We were able to see fresh people come out. We were able to see seven people saved and five new converts were water baptized as they made a public profession of their faith. We've been anticipating the work of the Holy Spirit. I had the opportunity to preach on a secular radio station. They have a segment for religious hour, and uh, they approached me and asked me to preach hope and love. I've had numerous opportunities to preach salvation and pray for the sick over the radio waves. One occasion, God spoke to me to pray for the Holy Ghost, that people would be baptized, and I did that. I'm believing God were filled with the Holy Ghost over the airwaves. Victory in finances. A doctor, a local doctor, a friend of mine asked me out for coffee. He wanted to know how our church was doing during the pandemic. I began to tell him that God was bringing in fresh converts. In this, after the conversation, a day later, he deposited 10,000 rand into our church bank account. He didn't know that he sponsored four men to the Joe Berg rally and were able to take four new converts uh, by the finances of this man. Eternal impact. We just had our men's rally and Pastor Bennett preached a powerful sermon. Friday night I gathered the men together and I told them that we cannot leave changed or we have to leave changed from this service. And uh, Pastor Bennett preached about Ehud, that everyone else was fashioning a gift to a man that held the people captive for 18 years, but one man fashioned a dagger. And I challenged our men to fashion a dagger for their generation. And that Sunday, I selected six men, six young men, to begin to preach the gospel. Eternal impact has been made by Pastor Bennett and Sister Kathy. We went uh, into a local neighborhood and uh, we began to believe God. A man had a vision for this neighborhood and we began to pray for the sick 
And uh, the highlight, though, was a man who came, 18 years old. He wanted to be delivered from marijuana. I began to pray salvation and deliverance, but God spoke to me to pray him for the Holy Ghost and fire, that he would be the key to this neighborhood. So I asked him if he'd received the gift. We laid hands. We put the mic in his voice, and he began to speak in tongues, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And in those sound waves, the Spirit of God began to move in that community. I want to thank God for Pastor Ben. Sister Kathy for their impact in our lives, their faithfulness in South Africa. I want to thank Pastor Greg, Pastor Morales, the Prescott Church, uh, this conference body. I want to especially pray Pastor Foley and Pastor Zebel, the Yuma congregation. Let's look forward to God's wave of revival. Good evening, my name is Archie Brown, my wife's name is Adel. We're pioneering in uh, Panaji, Goa, India. Amen, and we're having a great time. The last two years has been an adventure for us. In January, we celebrated our one-year anniversary of being open in our building, and we had Pastor Alex Ambrose come and preach the gospel to us. Uh, he gave timely words. In February, I began to do uh, some classes for the men, to, uh, some sermon workshops, and after those classes had uh, ended, we had two men uh, get up and preach for the very first time. We did a Young Lions night, gave them 15 minutes apiece, and they did incredible jobs. One of those men, uh, one of those young men was my son who was 15 years old at the time, uh, preached the gospel for his very first time, preached his first altar call and testified for the first time in the nation of India. This uh, Young Lions Night sparked a revival in our church. It ignited a fire, a spirit in the church that was equivalent to one week's revival. Some people that only come out Sunday morning, they came back that Sunday night. One man was in the middle of a business deal and it was taking too long. He said, the deal is off. I need to make it to church to hear these young men preach the gospel for the first time. We went there to reach Hindus, but every person except for one person that is in our congregation is uh, uh, from Catholic background, and there is a Catholic stronghold in Goa, but we are breaking that stronghold one sinner at a time. Amen. One of the teens invited out a woman, uh, one of her friend's parents, uh, out to the, uh, uh, to the service right after uh, we opened back up from the lockdown. That lady, she's from St. Vincent. She's married to an Indian, been in India for 20 years. She says, finally, I find a place that I can call my home and that I belong to. She said, we need to pray for my husband. He's Catholic, uh, and I want him to save. So he began to drive her to, uh, to the church, drop her off, uh, and then he began to drop her off and stay. Then he began to drop her off and come in and say hello. Then he dropped her off and got saved, amen, and powerfully delivered from alcoholism, powerfully set free from Catholicism, amen, and is one of our main guys right now supporting us while we are away, amen. We give God the praise. We had a couple of money miracles. One of them was a lady named Deborah. She gave what was equivalent to 30 U.S. dollars when my pastor took a world missions offering there at the Pioneer Rally. We watched online. One of her drunk brothers called three days later and said, when our mother was alive, they had one stock or something she invested in. We cashed it, one of those out, and it was, she received what was equivalent to about $1,300, amen, from $30 to $1,300, amen, giving to world missions even though we are a mission. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Raj for coming to do a revival for us in the month of April. He came and preached one message, amen, uh, about what our fellowship is, amen, encouraged and stirred our people, amen. Uh, despite of all of the close, uh, uh, all of the lockdowns, we've been seeing God move. India's open this despite the pandemic, amen. I want to thank Pastor Greg, amen, for trusting my wife and I. I want to thank my father in the faith, Pastor Martinez, Mama Ceci, amen, the Ogden congregation, amen. I thank you, amen. Continue to pray for us, amen. Praise God. My name is Felipe Segovia. Man, I feel you, Pastor. My name is Felipe Segovia. My wife Daisy and our two children were launched out of a, a Prescott Conference in July 2014 into Bogota, Colombia. Amen. And I want to share with you what God has been doing in this last 12 months. 
In July of 2020, we were sitting in our home. I'm in full quarantine, full lockdown. I turned uh, to YouTube for our, li our live services, Amanda. We had several men doing uh, Bible studies through Zoom, Amanda. And uh, my pastor called me one Sunday afternoon. And he, uh, this is in July 2020 conference. I'm in a couple weeks after the conference. Uh, and he said he had an urgent need. He wanted to know if we could respond to that need. I want to let you know I told him that we could absolutely help. Uh, so we sent a collection. Colombian couple, amen, out of our church, Sebastian Lopez and his wife Viviana, into the city of Cali, Colombia. Amen, they have done an incredible job in that city, amen, having revival in that place. Uh, that uh, move, amen, uh, set uh, the church on fire. And even though we were completely in shutdown, amen, and in quarantine, it did something to the church, but it also did something to our men. Uh, amen, uh, when uh, we finally returned to church, uh, the men in the church began to rise up, uh, serve as ushers, amen, lead. Uh, our weekly outreaches, uh, sing in the choir, get involved in prayer, outreach team, uh, the drama team. Uh, not only that, I mean, uh, soon after, God began to draw new young people to our church. Immediately, God placed the burden in my heart for these young lives. I told our church that we would do whatever it took, uh, I mean, to engage these young lives uh, into the things of God. Uh, we placed another couple, I mean, into our children's church. Uh, we started monthly youth extremes, I mean, uh, to be able to preach to them. God, uh, uh, moved in their lives. Uh, I mean, we gave them lessons, learned how to play instruments, uh, got them involved in the puppet team, uh, took them to outreaches. I mean, let me tell you, I mean, it's a wonderful thing to see young people, I mean, now in our outreaches, street preaching, involved in sound video teams, I mean, partic participating in bands, uh, in our youth uh, extremes, I mean, uh, uh, and even praying and fasting for our church. Uh, what are the other things that has happened in our church? A lot of uh, Venezolanos have come into the church because of the turmoil and unrest in Venezuela. God is moving, Amanda, and uh, many of them broken, misguided, hungry for a change in their lives. Uh, and how many, how many of you guys know that God still is still in the business of changing lives, Amanda? We have seen God powerfully move in, the, in these guys, I mean, uh, they've come in uh, making decisions, I mean, to serve God, to get right with God. Uh, lives are being changed. Uh, they're getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I mean, they're getting set on fire for the things of God. Not only that, I just married a couple three months ago. I mean, it was quite the task to get them, uh, this was kind of weird, I mean, get them into Venezuela and out of uh, amen, but God moved in their lives. Uh, God uh, is moving. We just baptized 19. I mean, the last several months. Uh, I think Pastor Cox, uh, the Redlands Con. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Mitchell, uh, Sister Lisa, Pastor Morales, and uh, uh, this congregation, also my pastor, Paul Stevens, amen, and so for their trust uh, in us, amen, and sending us, amen, to the beautiful island of Havana, Cuba. Hallelujah. My, uh, my name is Angel Ortiz, my wife Bernadette, and my three beautiful daughters, uh, Sweetie Beauty and Pinky. We pioneer in Havana, Cuba. We were sent there, amen, three and a half years ago, amen. Uh, we showed up, amen. Uh, we can't get a building. We can't uh, pass out flyers. I got to be careful who I witness to. So how do you start a church there? You got to trust God, amen. Let me tell you something. God met with us, amen. God began to raise up a quick work, amen. We are a genuine Book of Acts church. We meet in somebody's house, hallelujah, amen. God is raising up, amen, a, a wonderful church. And not only that, God has given us total authority and dominion on the island, amen, in a communist nation, amen. We are preaching on the streets. We have uh, live concerts, dramas, testimonies. I'm pulling altar calls on the streets. Hundreds are getting saved, hallelujah. The cops come by, they just keep driving on. On. Amen. Uh, nothing is stopping us there. Hallelujah. Tremendous momentum until COVID came. Amen. Uh, you know, they shut the, uh, us down. They shut down the country down. Amen. And so, you know, I, I used to be a criminal and locks, chains, uh, uh, alarms or, or, or borders wouldn't stop me. Amen. I'm not going to let COVID stop me either. Amen. So we decided, amen, to continue to power on. Amen. Uh, I started at first recording and uh, uh, we don't have internet. Amen. So we couldn't do Zoom or live stream. Amen. Some of you will get that later. We didn't have internet. Amen. So we uh, started just recording myself and I got tired of just preaching to 
to a camera. I said, okay, I'm going to invite one couple per service, but you got to invite another couple or some uh, sinners. I mean, we have had more visitors. I mean, during COVID, people getting locked in, established. I have three new couples. I mean, they're already on ministry. I mean, on fire, want to preach the gospel. I have five couples in my church, I mean, that take turns preaching, running the services, want to preach the gospel. And this past uh, uh, El Paso Bible Conference, we were able to launch our first baby work, hallelujah, into a neighboring city. Amen. God is doing something wonderful. Amen. Uh, I've been stuck since March. Amen. I'm supposed to leave in 10 days. You pray for us. A lot of civil unrest. Amen. But let me tell you something. Nothing is going to stop the gospel from being preached in Cuba. You pray for us. Amen. Like Pastor uh, Heinberg said, man, I want to get back, pour my life into these men. We're going to win the island for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.